Hey everyone, it is Danny, and welcome to this update video. I hope that you guys are having a really wonderful start to the day thus far. And so in this video, we'll be taking a look at what is currently happening across the North Atlantic, as well as what is expected in terms of the rainfall activity. Uh, we'll be looking at the model ensemble track, the ocean heat content, as well as the Saharan dust. And so before I go into details, please do subscribe if you haven't yet done so, and tap the notification bell so that you never miss an important update. Okay, so as we return to this infrared satellite imagery, we can see that there is uh, some activity going on across sections of the North Atlantic. So let's zoom into some areas here, starting with Northern and South America. And so there is some convective activity over parts of Guyana, likely due to lots of rainfall, maybe some thunderstorm activity as well in sections of the country. There is also a bit of convection noted just to the north of parts of Guyana and Suriname. Going to Venezuela, we're not seeing that much activity taking place nor over parts of Colombia. Looking into the ABCLs, things are looking pretty sunny this morning for Aruba, Curacao and Bonaire. Nothing much happening there either and Things have also improved a lot for Trinidad, where a lot of rainfall activity was taking place for some time. So we're not seeing where that much activity is noted within the area. But moving to the general Caribbean region, we can definitely see that there is some activity that is moving in coming from the tropical Atlantic. And so that could help to induce some rainfall activity across the eastern islands heading throughout today. And then heading more to the west, of course, uh, for most areas, it's going to be some beautiful sunshine this morning. Parts of Hispaniola going to Jamaica section of the Cayman Islands and then of course uh, for sections of Cuba we still see that there is that cloud cover extended into parts of the Bahamas in association with the remnants of all the activity that was taking place within the region going over to Central America we can see that uh, there is some activity especially along the uh, Pacific coast of the various territories but for most areas a beautiful morning going to the Yucatan Belize the Bay Islands sections of Guatemala Honduras Nicaragua Costa Rica but of course going down into Panama we see a bit more activity inland for the country. And so now let's go ahead and talk about uh, the Saharan dust. So we're looking at the dust map and of course as we head more to those shades of oranges and reds, those are more dense plumes of Saharan dust. We find more dust uh, being in abundance there. And so across the Caribbean, there you have the Caribbean region, we can see that some of that dust is making its way through, affecting some areas such as Jamaica also going down to parts of Honduras and maybe Nicaragua. Uh, of course, uh, we have Hispaniola, Puerto Rico, and the eastern islands and there we have another plume of dust that is going to be making its way in and this is not a surprise because uh, this is when the Saharan dust is typically at its peak so we see that these dust masses just make their way from Africa and of course the trade winds carry them across the Atlantic to the Caribbean and this is what really helps to suppress a lot of activity in the month of June and I, uh, as I mentioned that of course we have some of the models expecting that we could possibly see something as we're going to be heading into the uh, rest of this month. So we're going to be showing you guys the ensemble tracks for two models later down in this video. But for now, this is what is happening. Lots of Saharan dust out there, um, increasing the hostility of conditions for development. But once there is a break in all that Saharan dust and the wind shears also can do so, then we can start to see some action. Heading to the rainfall maps now, starting out with the icon models. So, of course, as the map becomes more colorful, more rainfall activity is expected. So, we can see that for most of the Northern Caribbean, not much is anticipated. Maybe the development of some afternoon shower and thunderstorm activity. Things expected to be sunny for most of today for Jamaica, the Cayman Islands sections of Cuba, going to Hispaniola and parts of the Bahamas. But going over into Central America, uh, parts of the Yucatan, Guatemala, Belize, Honduras, the Bay islands sections of Nicaragua not much activity expected within those areas but of course along the Pacific coast and the Caribbean coast of parts of southeastern Nicaragua going to Costa Rica and Panama more rainfall activity possible within those areas also we're seeing that some substantial rainfall is likely across parts of northern South America going to Guyana Suriname sections of French Guiana possibly for Trinidad and Tobago as we head through today and then heading up into the Lesser Antilles of course is actually 
showed you guys earlier, we have some activity moving in from the tropical Atlantic. And so that could help to enhance the rainfall activity for the eastern islands at times. And then heading to the Euro model, Euro is uh, pretty much in agreement showing that rainfall activity for sections of Central America going to South America into the vicinity of Trinidad and Tobago. And of course, a bit less. Uh, nonetheless, the rainfall activity possible across the eastern islands going to the northern Caribbean. Now, heading on to what the models are forecasting, we're looking at the ensemble tracks. Now, these are different members here. And so, of course, the more members we see uh, expecting development, there is somewhat of a better chance of seeing it happen, but not a guarantee. So let's look at the GFS ensemble members first. And uh, there we have the time right up there, the forecast time. So as you're going to be heading into the latter part of this week, there we start to see the model sniffing at a low pressure area developing uh, over in the Pacific. We have those different members hopping on, but take a look over in the Caribbean, the Southern Caribbean, going up to the Northwest and also coming from the Atlantic. There are a couple of members expecting that, hey, we could see something develop from maybe one of those tropical waves. Uh, so this is very interesting here, what it is uh, showing. But as I said, this is not something that is guaranteed to take place. Looking at the Euro ensemble members now, let's see. And of course, uh, the different colors of the line, they indicate the maximum winds uh, in knots. So when we have the darker blue, those are tropical storm force winds. Of course, heading to the early part of next week, here we have the Euro ensemble members picking up on something, not showing that it is going to be very strong. Just a couple of those uh, members expecting that, hey, we could see tropical storm force winds coming from that low pressure area. But nonetheless, here we're seeing some, uh, here we're seeing them sniffing at something. And this wouldn't be surprising. I mean, we're in the hurricane season and uh, even heading to the month of July, as we head to uh, the lesser part of June going to July, we typically have more of those systems making their way out of the Atlantic and we typically have those waves managing uh, to make their way to the Caribbean, sometimes developing into weak tropical storms. So, of course, I'm going to be keeping track of all that is expected, guys. And uh, in terms of the ocean heat contents, now, as we head more toward these darker shades of oranges and reds, that is where we have very deep, warm waters. So, if what the GFS is forecasting for the Caribbean uh, comes true, then the system could make its way into the northwest. And if other conditions, such as the wind shear, is conducive and there's lots of moisture, we could certainly have some intensification there, but uh, it is still being very robust about that system. Other models such as the Euro show that increase in all that moisture, but in terms of actually seeing development, that isn't being forecasted. And again, nothing new marked on the National Hurricane Center's outlook map. But of course, as I said, I will keep you guys updated. And so that is pretty much it for now. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll try to respond as best and as soon as I can. And of course, you can share your thoughts there and remember to always be weather wise.